What's going on guys, it is Panjana here and today I'm going to bring you guys the ultimate guide to increasing your networking speed and download speed with inside of the Xbox One. This guide works for all versions of the Xbox One, going from the original Xbox One itself, Xbox One S and Xbox One X. Regardless of whether you guys are running on a wired or wireless connection, this guide will be helping you guys achieve the very best connection possible with your setup. We'll be going through some very quick and basic techniques for some of you guys looking for a very quick fix and later on in the video we're going to be going through some more advanced techniques to help you guys fine tune the very best connection settings possible based on your location and network setup. To start off before we jump into the video, first of all what we need to make sure is that we're running in the best foundation possible and your console's location is in the best location possible if you guys are running on Wi-Fi to eliminate any issues. Starting off with the very basics and how to improve your connection speed, the number one thing you could possibly do outside of any tweaks or optimizations is to actually run a wired connection to your Xbox. This will have more impact than absolutely anything you do on Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter whether or not your console is sat right next to the router, a wired connection is always recommended for the most stable, consistent and fast connection possible. There are still some tweaks and optimizations you can do on a wired connection to further enhance it, but for any of you guys running on wireless, that is the most effective step in which you can take to improving your network speed and stability. Another recommendation of mine would to be eliminating any Wi-Fi boosters or power over Ethernet setups in which you might have. For instance, if you're running a wired connection outside of the back of the Xbox to a power plug or internet over power, I'd recommend doing away with this entirely as the inbuilt Xbox One Wi-Fi adapter is typically a lot stronger of those found with inside of those types of setups. So you should either be using the inbuilt Xbox Wi-Fi or using a one-to-one -one Ethernet cable going directly from the back of the Xbox to your router. Moving on to the basics for Wi-Fi users, make sure that your console is positioned as closely to the router as possible and as far away from any brick walls inside of your house or wherever you have the Xbox set up to enhance the Wi-Fi strength to the router itself. Typically the best place to set up a router in most homes would be around about the middle floor or the second floor, placing any important items underneath it or above it. Wi-Fi signals typically have a lot harder time penetrating through brick and other strong materials, so it's always best if you have any thinner walls in your home, or as I said, if you can put the router below or above the room in which you're playing on, as you'll typically have wooden floorboards in which Wi-Fi signals can typically penetrate through a lot easier. Alongside that, keeping the Xbox One S in the most open airspace possible will typically help you increase your internet speed and stability, making sure that it does not conflict with any other devices, especially other Wi-Fi devices, such as TV setup boxes or other consoles you might be having on at the time, in which will also be sending and receiving a Wi-Fi. Signal. So with all that done and set out of the way, we're going to start off with actually getting into the Xbox One itself and optimizing the connection which we're using, depending on whether or not we're running wired or Wi-Fi. So once you've eliminated all of the external factors to do with your home, positioning of the console, wh whether or not you're running on a wired connection or not, once you've got the console positioned in the best place or best scenario possible, given the way your Xbox is positioned within inside of the home or wherever you have it set up, we can first of all do a benchmark test. To do this, what we're going to be doing is heading onto the Xbox console, heading into the top left hand side to the profile icon and clicking on that. Inside of here, we'll then take ourselves over to the right hand side to the system tab. With inside of here, we're then going to navigate down to the settings icon found with inside of here. With inside of the settings icon, we're then going to take ourselves all the way down to the networking options found here. Once inside of the networking tab, take ourselves down to network transfer. First of all, we're going to be going inside of here and actually turning off this option if we don't use it. You can see a description as to what this option does. If this option is not used by yourself or you don't plan on using it anytime soon, turn this off as you can simply come in and turn this back on if you wish to do so. This just stops the Xbox being available on the local network, which can sometimes cause conflicting issues with network stability. Once you've got that turned off, we're then going to be never getting into the network settings tab. As you can see, I'm currently running my Xbox over Wi-Fi, but again, all of the following tweaks will work perfectly fine on wired connections as well, alongside offering you potentially even better results than those running on Wi-Fi. So inside of here to do a quick network test to see what speeds we're running on defaultly now that we've moved the console, we can head over to the right hand side to the detailed network statistics tab and click on that. This will then go ahead and check your connection for the stability, speed, ping and other details. This can take a few moments depending on the speed of your Xbox, just simply walk away, come back in a few moments time or pause the video and after a few moments you'll be given a connection report. After your report comes back you'll then be notified of your download speed, upload speed, packet loss percentage, the latency and the wireless connection strength if you're running on a wireless connection. This will be a good baseline and you can feel free to write these down now to see how much of an improvement you've got. This will help you guys improve your packet loss if you have a percentage of packet loss. This should also help improve your latency slightly, but more importantly, increase those download and upload speeds. So once you've done that, we can then back out of there simply by pressing B and we can start off by taking ourselves down to the advanced settings. Inside of here, you'll be seeing your IP address and your DNS settings. I've blocked out some of my settings with inside of here just for privacy issues, but for you guys following this, you'll be seeing numbers input in the blank spaces and where you can't see them on mine. To start off, what we're going to be doing is navigating down to the DNS settings tab, as this is going to be the options we're going to be tinkering around with to achieve the very best connection possible. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this off of automatic and setting this to manual. 
At this point in the video, whether you're running on a wired connection or a wireless connection, and based on your country, you can navigate into the description down below and you'll be seeing a list of primary and secondary DNS servers, depending on the country in which you live in. These are the quick and easy DNS servers which will give you effective results, but they might not give you the best results. If you continue to watch the rest of this video, which I'm about to show you in a few moments time, we're going to be going in and actually fine tuning our DNS settings for the very best settings possible, whether you guys are looking to minimize your ping and packet loss, or increase your download speed and upload speed to the highest they can possibly be. I'd recommend taking the extra few minutes and going ahead and actually following the advanced techniques, but if you guys are looking for a very quick fix, you can simply follow the DNS servers in the description down below. For me, assuming I'm living in the UK, the best DNS server in which we can quickly apply is actually going to be 8, 8, 8, 8, and then enter in that. And for the secondary DNS server, it's going to be 8844. Again, these DNSs can be different depending on the country in which you live in. You might be finding better results going with different ones. And then simply after you've done that, you'll just input those settings just like so. After that, you can then take yourself back over to the detailed network statistics and do a quick test. And that is a quick and easy way to improve the network stability and speed with inside of the Xbox One. If you guys are looking for the very best settings possible, you can go ahead with this advanced technique in which I'm going to be showing you guys now. This advanced technique will take where you live exactly, your connection setup and parameters, and it will provide you guys with a list of DNS servers in which you can select whether or not you want to have the best ping, the most stable ping, or the highest download speeds possible. This is to complete completely fine tune your network settings for the best results possible, and it's relatively easy and simple to do. To follow along with these steps, you'll have to have access to a computer running on the same network. It doesn't have to be a high-end PC, it just simply has to have access to the same network as you're running on, preferably wired, and have access to Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. So to find the best networking settings possible, is you'll simply switch over to a PC running on the same network. Once you guys are on the PC, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the description down below, and you'll be finding a DNS tool or a network tool in the description down below. You'll see the link, simply click on the link. Once you guys have clicked on the link for the networking tool, you'll then be brought to this web page here. What we're simply going to be doing is downloading the name bench tool which will actually run a benchmark on our network providing us with the best DNS settings possible and which we can apply to everything on our network not even just the Xbox One. This will apply for the PlayStation as well and I have a separate video on that in which you can find on screen and in the description down below and also any PCs. But for this video we're going to be focusing on the Xbox One. So what you'll do is you'll simply navigate down here and you'll click on the version of the program depending on the operating system you're running on. If you're running on Mac OS X you'll download the top version. If you're running on a Windows PC go to the name bench version 131 and download the EXE just like so. This will then open up in the bottom right hand side, just simply go ahead and open up the program. Once the program's installer has opened up, simply then go ahead and hit extract. Once the program is extracted, it should open up automatically and look very similar to this. Again, for the best results, I'd recommend wiring your PC to the internet directly or your laptop by taking an ethernet cord, plugging it directly into the back of the router and then into the laptop or PC you're running on. This is to make sure that we can eliminate all external factors in which can randomly come up and we can get a good solid benchmark to give you guys the best results. Inside of here, all we need to make sure that we're doing is include global DNS providers up here at the top. Health check performance, we're going to be setting to fast. A number of queries, this is how many times it's actually going to be checking through these. If you want this benchmark to run relatively quickly, set this to around about 50. But for you guys out there who have a slight bit of time and want to get the best results possible, I'd keep this at around about 250. After this, what we're then going to go ahead and do is go to the bottom right hand side and click on start benchmark. Now this can take a little while, so I'd walk away from the PC for around about 20 minutes to half an hour. Feel free to go back on your Xbox and continue to game. Once the benchmark has been completed, it will automatically open up an Internet Explorer tab with the list of DNS servers in which you'll see shortly. But again, this can take a little while, so just go ahead, hit Start Benchmark, and wait for everything to go through. Once the benchmark has been concluded, more than likely your Windows Internet Explorer will then open up. With this page found here, yours will look very similar to this, but your numbers and data will be different because you're obviously on a different connection to myself. With inside of here, you'll be given all of the data you need to make a decision whether or not you wish to go for the lowest ping possible or the fastest and most stable connection. So what we can start off by doing is actually scrolling down to the tested DNS servers and in here you'll find all of the DNS servers and which have been tested in your area and the results given for them. Here you can sort by average ping. You can also see the difference between each of the benchmarks by a percentage. You can see the minimum ping and the maximum ping given here. As you can see here on the default connection which is benchmarked, I'm going between 10.6, which is the lowest ping out of all of them, but I'm also hitting a high of a maximum ping of 1436, meaning that this is probably one of the most unstable connections possible. The average ping was 27.88, but as you can see, the maximum was all the way up at 1436. So going with these settings here, you'll more than likely find lower ping on average, but you'll find much higher spikes, and these can come around when you least need them, so I'd say it's probably best to avoid results like this. For me, I'm 
already seeing some results in which I'm wishing to go with, and that's going to be the Google Public DNS. As you can see for me, the minimum ping it's given me is 22.1, and the maximum it's given is 293, which is a lot more stable compared to pretty much any of the other results found with inside of here. Once you guys have found the results in which you wish to use, we're going to be finding our primary and secondary. So for me, I'm going to be setting my primary to the Google DNS server. As you can see, the minimum ping and the maximum ping are fantastic, and that's what I'm going to primarily go with. Once you've found your first result, what we're then going to be doing is finding another one which we can set up as our secondary DNS server. So again, look through the list and find one which you wish to use for your backup DNS. For me, I'm more than likely going to be going with Ultra DNS found here, which is giving me a result of 22.8 on the minimum and 272.9 on the maximum. Again, this looks incredibly stable compared to my baseline, so I'm going to be setting this up as my secondary. So again, you'll take two numbers out with inside of here and you'll be setting these as your DNS servers. So for me, my primary will be 8888 and my secondary will be 156.154.70.1. Again, these numbers are going to be completely different from you. I recommend noting them down in a pen and paper or noting them down in a notepad. And once you guys have found the results in which you wish to use, we can take ourselves back over to the Xbox. Once you guys are back inside of the Xbox, again, we can take ourselves up to the top left hand side, head over to the settings tab and click on settings once again. We can then take ourselves back down to network, go inside of the network settings, and go ahead to the advanced settings tab found here. With inside of here, we're going to take ourselves back down to the DNS settings. We're going to set these to manual and we're going to input our primary DNS in which we decided to go with based off of the benchmark list. So again, my primary is going to be 88888, which is already set up. Then for my secondary, I'm actually going to be using the Ultra DNS one because that gave me the second best results. Again, these numbers will be completely different for you, but just input your secondary DNS server. Once you've then got that set up, go ahead and enter that in once again, and your internet connection should then be updated on the Xbox One. Now before doing anything else, I'd recommend actually restarting the console by holding down the power button, going over to the right hand side and selecting restart. Restart the Xbox just to make sure that it completely initializes and reboots the console and reconnects you to the Wi-Fi with your updated settings. Once the console is restarted and you're back connected to the internet, last but not least, what you can now go ahead and do is you can either decide to just go ahead and jump straight into playing on the Xbox One with the updated settings, or you can take yourself back into the network settings and do another test and compare your results. Your settings will vary depending on whether or not you're aiming for download speed. You might find better download speeds on other DNS servers and also ping. You could see a slight increase in average ping compared to your first result, but your download speed will more than likely be higher. So again, feel free to go in and mix and match your DNS settings. And if you do have the time, I'd recommend going ahead and fine tuning what works for you best. And with all that said and done, one last thing I'd recommend is I'd recommend doing this around about once every month to two months, as sometimes DNS settings and servers can change and you might find better results on different DNS servers in a few weeks from now as time goes on. So to ensure that you're getting the very most out of your Xbox's connection to the internet at all times, make sure that you do update these settings around about once every month to two months. With all that said and done, that concludes my ultimate guide to optimizing the network settings with inside of the Xbox One. Again, that works on every single Xbox One console from the Xbox One original launch, Xbox One S and Xbox One X. Feel free to post any results, questions, queries, or suggestions for other content you'd like to see hit the channel in that comment section down below. It's always fantastic to hear from you guys. Alongside leaving a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as it helps me out tremendously, and if you guys do enjoy content like this and wish to see more, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly of whenever I upload or brand new community suggested content. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video guys, I've been Pengeno and I'll see you in the next one.